expired. Senator Seward. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. I rise to make a contribution to this debate on this very important topic. And when Senator Ferravanti Wells described New Start and income support are as a lifestyle choice, you understand where this government is coming from. They simply do not understand these issues and the contempt they show to young Australians and older Australians and people that are trying to exist on the meagre New Start allowance is beyond contra is beyond anybody's wildest thoughts. They are appalling. It is quite clear how they are viewing the most vulnerable in our community. While this government expands all its energies on trying to protect the big banks, big miners, big polluters and big businesses, we know how they are carelessly and cruelly treating young Australians. Young Australians are being condemned to live in poverty and that, of course, means they have a very uncertain future because we know what living in disadvantage, particularly in your early years, what impact that has for the rest of your life. And today, the Prime Minister said to the crossbenchers, make some suggestions about alternative revenue sources. And believe me, we, the Greens, have made plenty for start, but they are deaf to that because they are too busy protecting the big end of town while they make young, vulnerable Australians pay the price, and they will be paying the price for the rest of their lives. This government is failing young Australians. This budget is grim for young Australians. When education becomes inaccessible, housing is unaffordable, universal health care, they want to be a thing of the past. All these, people, all these changes condemn young people to a very uncertain future. And my colleague, Senator Denatale, will address some, some issues around uh, those issues shortly. But of course, the most gobsmacking impact on young people in this budget is, of course, dropping young people onto no income support for six months or longer. Because if you make a mistake in compliance, you are then given another month with no income support. This exposes young people to poverty and is yet another barrier to work, which when people are forced to live on nothing, I repeat, nothing for six months. They know this is cruel. They know it's going to drop people in, into disadvantage, it, which is why they've allocated some funding, additional funding to emergency relief, so young people can learn early to go and beg for support. That is what we are teaching our young people. Go to charity, and I'm not maligning charity at all. I'm a very vocal and strong supporter of them. But to teach young people that that's what you do, you go and beg for support, is outrageous. And of course, that's not even new money. They've taken 240 million out of the discretionary grants program in the Department of Social Security and reallocated that to emergency relief. So programs that could actually, again, help young people, help the most disadvantaged in our community, are being robbed to pay for this cruel government approach to young people. This is going to affect hundreds of thousands of Australians, hundreds of thousands of young Australians. And when I asked in estimates, because um, I too was in estimates along with um, a number of other people asking how this cruel program was going to work, I asked about whether young people, when they'd come through the six months work for the, being condemned to work for the doll, out of which you get no training, no guarantee at jobs at the end, when I asked if they managed to find casual work or part-time work, would they get the wage subsidy? Can't answer that. If you get part-time or casual work, could you then still get the job commitment bonus? Because it's not young people's fault that the work isn't there, because it's not. When I asked that, I was told, no, we can't answer that. Um, we call that micro-policy. Senator, we call that micro policy. In other words, they haven't worked out the details of what these programs, what impact these going to, programs are going to have, how they're going to help young people, how are they going to assist young people into finding work, how are they going to work their wage subsidy scheme. They couldn't tell me because they haven't worked out the details. Young people want to work. Uh, contrary to what Senator Ferry Vanty Wells has been portraying to this, into this chamber, young people do not see this as a lifestyle choice. They want to work. The work 
isn't there. When you are condemned to live in poverty on nothing, you will be more worried about where your next meal is coming from, which charity to go to to get your next meal, which charity to go to to help you find accommodation. Because when you're living on nothing, you won't have accommodation. You won't be able to maintain your accommodation. It makes a complete farce of the next piece of cruelty that's happening here, which is you're living on New Start, no payment, nil payment. So you've still got your obligations for New Start to be looking for jobs, and the government's saying, "Oh, we think they're going to have to look for around 40, make 40 applications for work a month." Now, how can you make 40 applications for work a month when you haven't even got stable accommodation, when you haven't even don't even know where your next meal is coming from? That is the last thing that you're going to be able to do, let alone having access to a computer or um, any means of being able to actually get those applications in. And of course, that also then leads me on to how do you find work when the work isn't there? Well, you go to your job service provider, of course, and the government's busy, hasn't quite worked out how that's going to work yet because they're putting extra compliance on. So the normal rules for New Start Stream 1 and 2 aren't going to apply for young people, but they can't tell us how that's going to work either in estimates. Job Services Australia are not providing the services that need to be supported, uh, provided for young people. Youth Connections is now gone. Um, and if they don't have any ideas, they should actually start talking and looking seriously at proposals by the Brotherhood of St Lawrence, who have put a very good report out that make very sensible suggestions, which, by the way, doesn't include dropping people onto, income support, onto no income support for six months. The government has got this wrong. Go back to the drawing board. Don't condemn our future, gen our, our future our senior leaders and senior people in this country to such a bad start, because that's what you're doing. You are condemning them to poverty. You are condemning them to poor life outcomes, because living on nothing Senator Seward, is appalling. Senator Seward, your time appalling. has expired. Senator Pollock.